So guys, welcome back to Unleash. It's been a while since we've been able to do an episode. I've said since the beginning, you know, of starting this podcast with you, it's been a dream come true for me as a as a kid, man. One of my heroes growing up was you, Dan the Beast Severn, UFC Hall of Famer. There's been so much that we haven't got to talk about, uh, and we're going to go over today. Uh, the Tyson and Paul fight, I'd like to, to pick your head about that post-election. Uh, we yep. talked the week before the election, but we haven't got to talk since. And also the John Jones fight uh, that went on. So we got a lot to talk about, but it's also Thanksgiving week. Uh, I am looking forward to Thanksgiving. It is my, personally, Dan, it is my favorite holiday uh, because no presents or anything are required. It's your presence with the the CE. It's showing up with your family, breaking bread, and uh, really looking at the things that matter and being thankful for the life that we got. What do you got going on for this Thanksgiving, Dan? Well, Thanksgiving, I mean, I'll say it'll be, uh, I always tell people, the comical one-liner is by Gobble Gobble. It's, it'll be it'll be a food fest for me in, in the sense that, sure, there'll, there'll be turkey there, but then you name it, all the other trimmings will be a, a part of it. Um, we will have a, a few, um, I'll say, friends a, a, over at, at that time, um, but it, it'll, it'll be kind of like a, a small type of a, a, an aspect. It's... Um, you know, most of the, the big shindigs take place back in Michigan because that is where I'd say 90% of my family members all live. Okay, so, I was going to ask you about that. Is, is there yeah. any of your family in Arizona? Or You have just, all just, brothers, just, right? Just, just, just an older brother. So we tend to get together periodically to have a cup of coffee, a sandwich or something like that. So it's uh, I, I even have a phone call off to him earlier today because it's uh it's that time that i, I want to sit down and visit with him once again because one of the other realities is that we're not as young as we once were no. and it's kind of going night then you have to look at okay at what time period did did, did, did your mother and your, and your father pass away then you gotta start looking at what kind of health conditions did did, did, did did they have because you are nothing more than a product of both of your parents whatever gene pool they had they passed on to you whatever health type of concerns they had they passed on some of those same attributes to you so it's uh it's pretty much a no-brainer when people you know i it, if, if if you're dating uh, if you're dating a young lady and you want to know what she might look like 20 30 years down the road just go look at mama's son you might want that to scare me off a few times. I'll be yeah, honest. Again, again, that's what I tell people. You might want to cut bait and, and, and run at that point. So, <laughs> or you may want to stick around. I mean, it, it's it, it's a gamble because it, is that is that one hundred percent proof? No, no, but uh, it's it's a pretty good guideline to go by. And and, and again, just in a sense of um, like like both my parents, there were some sort of problems with diabetes. And some, some problems with heart conditions. So knowing that that runs in the family, so you have to you know have yourself checked. I'm at I'm at the age where once a year I go and have the old annual physical, annual blood work, and then there's those other types of things that are not so nice to talk about. Of you know the 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 the, the old. Well, yeah, I mean, yeah, that, okay. That, that, see, a lot of people understand oh, that, that doesn't mean we're number one. That, that just means that's, no, that's, called the, the, that's called the prostate examination. So there's that's the, the one that makes me run. But then there's there's that golden one where they go and they want to do a colonoscopy so that you got to get when you hit a certain age again, they want to know then if, you, if, if, if everything checks out just fine, you're basically good for a decade. So it's kind of like going, yeah. I, I waited a little bit later in life. I finally had that little, in, what I call it, the violator. But uh, after that was done, I should be know that I'm good for at least the next decade. And then I go and get the next one of those. You know, and I, I think there are some great sentiments that you had in there, guys. This Thanksgiving, realize, you know, and we're going to talk about that on this podcast. Father time is undefeated. Uh, it's one of those things that catches up with us. Uh, enjoy this Thanksgiving with your family because your parents and, and the things that matters. Uh, in life, if you want to love, you're going to lose people, okay? Right. And they're not always going to be there. So make sure that you are taking that time with your family and being thankful. But I want to get back to well, father Bertie, time I'm, there. I'm say, is this one of those let me, things? Let me that, interrupt you. Uh, oh, go ahead. Know, because there is some of the aspects is there's a lot of people that they're at, they get to a certain age. And 
there's a will into them that they will fight to. I want to last till Christmas. I want to last till the first year. I want to last until my oh, next yeah, yeah. birthday. And then they finally expire because it gives them some kind of hope or a goal to shoot for. And that's where I'm really big about seniors, again, having a, an actual schedule. Don't mm. don't just sit around and wait for Father Time or the Grim Reaper to finally show up. Because I, I, right. just by... Just by say invest in a little bit of time in yourself. You don't have yeah. to go to the gym every day, but ha- have a couple people from your neighborhood that you get together with that you go for a walk. Maybe do some stretching, do some Pilates or something else, or do something physical. Because I mean, if you don't work the body or that mind, they're gonna go. I'm gonna shut down. But, but they may go a little bit sooner. If you don't work the body and the mind, I'm still thinking about. I, I there's so many things I want to say, but it's kind of going. Eh, let it go, Dan, and let's just let's make certain that, that the, the rest of this is, is out there to be seen. Because unless Elon Musk buys a few more things, you know, you still got to mind your p's and q's with other outlets. Did you see that they're talking about uh, Elon Musk might be going to buy MSNBC? Well, I, 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 to me, there's been all kinds of little speculations on things, and it's kind of going. I, uh, it's heating up though. That one, I thought it was just a joke. I never knew this. Did you know what the MS and MSNBC stood for? Microsoft. That was a Bill Gates thing. Microsoft oh. NBC. Because I never understood what's the difference between NBC and MSNBC. So yeah. that shows you right there where the funding was coming from. Uh, but. The other day, Musk was making a joke about buying it on the air and that Rachel Maddow, the reporter from MSNBC, she had to report it on MSNBC that Musk was talking about buying it. And she shut down and started crying. She couldn't talk. And I was like, I love this. I absolutely love this. You guys did this to yourself and you deserve it. it. Yeah. But once again, it's sad that the world had to get so stupid. The world just got so stupid. Because I, you know, there was no common sense. If if anyone was thinking in the terms of common sense, fifty percent more or, or, or more of the stuff that happened in the last four years would never have taken place. It is Thanksgiving, so you know, the the, the definitely the uh, there will be folks that will be uh, the folks that will be, and include myself, will be in, uh, indulging and in, in, in a little overindulging of, of all the goodies that will be at the table. But like I said, the you know, fact that that will be uh, that you'll be with family and friends on top of that. That's right. So so Thanksgiving is, is one of the aspects we're here. But then, you know, the, the talking about, um, you know, the, the, the political, the, the recent most political campaign was with Trump coming up uh, on top. Uh, for me, it's, you know, it's we'll still see how things play out. But uh, to me, that was the best move for America and and, Amer- and Americans. I, I don't care about the rest of the world. The world plays off of uh, off the United States in the first place. Oh, so yeah. I think that was the, the best uh, the best move for the country, especially when you looked at there was only two people boiled down in between. But here here's a, co- a question for you though, Eric. Okay. Okay. I'm ready. The fact that okay, Kamala Harris blew through. A billion that. dollars. Not okay. Not the M word, million. The B word, billion. She blew through a billion dollars, but I think she went like 20, 20 million or more about it. Now again, I could be wrong. Trump on offered to pay it off. What's that? Trump offered to pay it off for her. I, I know, but okay. Why? I, I think it was. Uh, I think it was done with a smile on his face, Dan. No, see, to, to me, it's like going, that, to me, that speaks volumes. If you cannot even run your own political campaign and you I just agree. went $20 million in debt, who's going to pay off your debt? Well, not only that, there was so much that went wrong in that, Dan. You went on Oprah, and it was, at first, they, they was reporting that she paid Oprah a million dollars for that interview. Well, then Oprah and them pushed back. She didn't pay me anything. She paid my production company. Okay. Well, 
same difference, let's be honest, but it came out that she ended up actually paying $2.5 million to Oprah for that interview. She goes uh-huh. on the Call Me Daddy podcast, spends 100000 She sent, I think it was Al Sharpton, either 250000 or 500000 more than once for his involvement. She was spending hundreds of thousands and millions of dollars getting people to endorse her. And this is something that Trump did for free. And for the life of me, I can't understand. Joe Rogan offered her to come on for free. Yeah. She wanted him to come to her. She wanted to tell him it was only going to be 45 minutes and that she was going to give him a list of questions to do. Basically say, I want your face on here, Joe, but I don't want to come to your studio. And I'm telling you what you get to ask me. And I'm going to make it a quarter of the time that you usually do. And he said, no. Trump yeah. goes on there. He got more views on that one interview for free with Joe Rogan than Kamala did all other interviews combined that she spent yeah. millions of dollars on. And yeah. this was the person spending two and a half million dollars on Oprah um, that is going to know how to fix this country and rebuild the middle class. Yeah. Dan, they are so separated from the middle class. They don't know anything about the middle class. I totally agree with you, Eric, that, and because those are just more examples of how is this person going to be a leader when she can't even balance her own budget, her own books. And again, where does that money come from? Where does this, the, 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 the most comical, the most comical mean that was sent to me was a picture of Mike Tyson and Kamala Harris you know, kind of like consoling each other, but it was a, it was all done in a Mike Tyson kind of a voice where he, he's like, "Yeah, I thought I come. You, 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 you lost twenty million. I made twenty million, <laughs> and, and we both and we both lost. So it's kind of like going. <laughs> oh, that's good. I haven't seen that one. No, it, it was it was actually really one. comical. But but when you know that that you know there, there's there, if you put it in, in a Mike Tyson type of a, uh, a voice stuff like that. Voice. It's even more comical. And again, I'm not trying to say that to make, make fun of him, but uh, no, no, he knows that by now. But I mean, listen, I, I think the most comical thing the whole time during that campaign was this is what I'm going to do when I get in office. That is a slap in the face to every American that anybody would listen to that because she's in office right now. She's had four years to do it. Yeah, especially. The, one of the biggest glaring aspects is like everyone keeps talking about the border, the border. And yet she was in charge of the border for the last four years of she was supposed to be the borders are. She was supposed to, to, to have done things to where, like, you know, did she ever, ever, ever even go down there? No, but she and she never went to Europe either. Yeah, <laughs> so, again, there which was made no, no sense. Well, but yeah. uh you know, she was the worst border czar of all time. And there at the end, she's acting like she wants to do something for the border. And all of a sudden, the Democrats are saying they're going to build the wall that Donald Trump started. Donald Trump was literally demonized for eight years because of wanting to put that wall up. And now when they see how bad it's gotten, now they want to do the wall. But Trump was still, I mean, that's just what the Democrats do. They deflect. They yeah. project and well, deflect. Yeah, They'll do the you, same things that you're doing. I mean, even like Trump was saying the no tax on tips for waitresses. And she started doing that same thing. They have no ideas. It's all about woke politics. They had nothing else in this campaign besides calling people names and blaming everything on Donald Trump. And it shows America yeah, spoke. It, it, it's really kind of sad how, how it boiled on down to, but it's kind of going. Um, I've been very, a, a, a very, Evidently speaking, that you could fix the country just by putting three three little uh, rules and or laws into place, and that is fact checking. Number one, the only the only person that will ever reject fact checking is the liar. So again, fact checking should be like number one, just to, as, as quickly as you can put up there, and and the yeah, and so. You got, you got to have reliable sources, sources that are good for for that. But so that's the problem. Be, Most of the fact-checking yeah. sites have became yeah. extremely left. Yeah, 
fa uh, fact checker should be number one. Number two is term limits. Two and you're done because in eight years, can you steal enough money to live on for the rest of your life knowing that you have to go and 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 re-engage life amongst your peers? And if you were treating them poorly and you were robbing them blind, they may not treat you so well when you come back to live amongst them. So, again, term limits, um, fact-checking, and the real kicker, put a cap on political campaigns. Eric, everyone that runs for, again, I'm just pulling out a hypothetical number. Everyone that's running for a presidential uh, uh, candidacy gets a $1 million budget. Boom. Again, I'm just using this as an example. So with that, if all of these candidates are, are, are restricted to this one amount, look at all the other millions and billions of dollars. Oh, I agree. That could have, that could have went to some actual good. I, Not I all agree. blown, all blown in the media that where did all this money? And again, Eric, start to calculate up between all the various campaigns that people were doing for Congress people, senators, VPs, presidential. How many, how many, I mean, we, we got to be in the trillions of dollars there. We have to be. Oh, yeah, absolutely. I mean, it's it's very telling. And that's where the, the corruption comes from in our politics, because it's not even really the politicians, Dan, running the country. It's the lobbyists. Those politicians are bought and paid for. They get these campaign donations from lobbyists who want certain things done. And when that person gets in office, they better serve their interests or the money dries up. And until we stop being able to fund and to have these, you know, outside interests in there, I'm afraid the system is what it is. But they did everything they could to make sure that Donald Trump uh, didn't get in office. In it. And I had to give the man something, Dan, several assassination attempts. I forget how many lawsuits uh, ended up, you know, trying to put him in jail, got the mugshot and everything. I don't know of any other person that could have went what he went through and still be swinging. I know myself, I couldn't have done it. Yeah, no, I, I, I totally agree with what you're saying there, Eric. It's uh, the, the, the fact that he's willing to, uh, to me, sort of forgive and forget. To me, it's like going, you can't forget. Because what was done was done. You better keep that chalk back to, to memory right there because don't give them a second chance. Because they'll 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 be successful the second time around. You got right. to you got to put things into place to make it fair. I I still believe in the, the voting process, but it still scared me as we were going late into the evening, and certain states had not called it yet, and they were talking about we may have to wait till tomorrow or within the next few days or weeks. And now I'm like, going, oh, no, 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 no. You're talking about this past one or 2020? No, we're, we're just talking about just, just, just what happened. Okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. You know, we, we're, we're, we're nearing, we're nearing the deadline and there's a few States yet that, you know, they haven't, nothing has been called here yet. We've been there before. Yes. Well, that's what I said. But, but yeah. that, and that's one thing, one of the things I bring up the fact that, Trump kept talking about the system being rigged the last time. And to me, while you're in office, you had better put the right things in place so there is true accountability. Don't, don't allow it to be manipulated from any kind of outside sources or by people who may be running that thing where they could do some ballot stuffing or bring up different cadavers and uh, and, and put their names and in, in information and you got there has to be some things put into place because because we live in this world nowadays electronics i think that it's even easier yet to steal people's identity or to change 
votes easily because of the <laughs> electronic access that we have, especially if you're good oh, yeah. at your, your craft. Oh, yeah. You know, really quick, Dan, uh, before we get out of here, I wanted to go back to something. We was talking about Father Time being undefeated. Uh, you know, talking about how that time goes by and making sure that we're spending that time with the ones that we love, the ones that matter. I mean, as we get older, we really start to look back on a lot of the things we stress about and realize what really matters in life and the stuff that we stress over that's not that important. But that's just that's just a part of growing up. Uh, and like I said, Father Time's undefeated. We have a story where I think that rings true more than anything. I want to talk about this Mike Tyson and Jake Paul fight. This was one of the craziest things that I ever saw. It was a big spectacle. I think one of the biggest fights of all time. Everybody tuned into it. I think there are so many people that has those, you know, heartstrings that was being tugged at my childhood. My favorite video game as a childhood, uh, Dan, was Mike Tyson's Punch Out. I loved it. And I don't know if you ever played video games. I doubt it. You don't you don't strike me as a video game person. But when you went up against Mike Tyson, if you got hit one time, you was down. Like you, there was no number two. He was the okay. hardest video game character I had ever played against. And back in the day, there was people that used to complain. They would buy the pay-per-views. And it was over before it even got started. As soon as Tyson hit him, he was gone. And that was who people were still thinking. You know, and that's what I wanted to believe was going to happen. But I was sitting back saying, Mike Tyson is going to be 58 years old. Like, I don't care who you are. That time ends up catching up to you. And yeah. I wouldn't mess with a, a Dan Severn at that age. This guy right here, if anybody had any idea, I saw him standing on top of his head not long ago, after, two weeks after having double carpal tunnel surgery and like a month or two after having hip surgery. Um, but Dan, I think even you would agree. Is a Dan Severn your age now? Is he going to be able to compete with a Dan to be Severn in his twenties? No, no, that's uh, that's no. Uh, again, that's where. And I don't care who you are. Yeah. Well, again, I I, I look I I look at the the whole aspect. It's like it was it it was it was unique. Um, it was going to be market marketable. Was it going to produce? Well, I mean, I did see some clips again. The, the, that's b because again, mm. the internet and that yeah. is all there. There got a lot of people. Yeah, it really did it, got a lot get a lot of people, and I think that is like very. False advertising. I think the ones that was really pointing that out, Dan, was Chell Sonnen and Joe Rogan, because they made those clips. Like if if Mike Tyson would have looked like he did in those training clips, there was going to be some problems that night. Yes, but there was a lot of there was a lot of trickery that went into those clips looking like they did. Yeah, well, again, I don't know who 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 we give credit to for coming up with some of those clips, but uh, I'll simply say that. The internet proved, and again, let, let's face it, b both the, the Paul brothers, they are skilled in social media. Uh, they have both made a great deal of money. Two of the best. Yes, utilizing social media. Good, bad, or indifferent, they're, they are proven. Um, Jake, Paul, especially by... Going after or early career, he was going after a lot of MMA guys and doing a boxing match with an MMA fighter. Yep. So it, it took them out of their element. Well, first off, they're, they're wearing two different types of gloves, and it's strictly just boxing and not, you know, because there were some guys that they come from maybe a kickboxing background, a movie time background, to where they they understand certain aspects of a patty, but then there also were, you know, people like me that were just more or less heavily grappling based that you know there is no no background so jake paul kind of made his his uh claim to fame there by just simply just beating up and knocking out various mma fighters and and, and now with this uh win over mike tyson he's now calling out conor mcgregor which you know is that, he? That, i didn't know that 
Yeah, that is. And, and it will be – that would be an interesting because Connor is actually very skilled at knowing how to utilize the media as well. So he's, Oh, yeah. Yeah. So I always tell people that uh, Connor McGregor is a perfect – if I use the, the terminology of professionals, Connor McGregor is a perfect heel. He knows how to do certain things as a heel to get heat. And uh, Jake Paul just simply just comes off as a heel anyway. The best lead up to me for a fight of all time was the fight between Condor and Mayweather. Because there were several times I had never seen anybody treat Floyd Mayweather the way Condor did. He would go up and kind of like, you know, flick him behind his ear or something like that and taunt him. Because even though Mayweather is who Mayweather was, he knew at any point in time, if he messed with Connor and they went to Connor's world, which was anything goes, he would have been in very big trouble. Sure. Very, very big trouble. And he taunted Floyd unlike anybody I had ever seen. But, you know, I, like I said, you know, Jake Paul, you got to give him credit. Him and his brother, they know how to market themselves. People hate him, and it's because they hate him and want to see him get knocked out why these fights are doing what they're doing. Sure. Uh, and I think it's so easy for people to discredit them. Jake's not a bad boxer. Do I think he's heavyweight championship uh, boxing caliber? No, not by any means, but I don't think he's a bad boxer. Right. And well, I, I don't think he would have took that fight if he knew he wouldn't be able to do it. I actually found a little bit of respect for Jake. Because after round two, Mike was gassed, Dan. Yeah. And I feel like Jake really could have hurt him if he wanted to. And uh, he didn't. And at the end, he bowed. And he, he, you know, he showed respect to Mike and everything like that. So that was nice. And that lets me see one of the legends that I grew up with that entertained me over the years, made a $20 million payday. At the end of the day, am I happy about that? And that he's not seriously hurt? Yes, I am. Yeah, no, again, I, I, I would agree with almost all the aspects that you, you brought out there. The fact that uh, yeah, I think there was a change of heart somewhere in this uh, uh, fight that I think we had a certain little game plan there to it, and it was a payday for both parties. Um, and uh, the fact that certain things did not happen, I'm, I'm, I'm happy about because it, it helps keep, uh, you know, Mike Tyson's uh, – legacy still in place there and it's a again as i i call it he, he he has some money in his pocket that he can ride off into the sunset and hopefully never need for anything ever again well let me let me bring this up though because i think you're a good uh, person to bring this up with you know you're you're in the fighting game and that's that's what you know and eventually father time catches up with yeah. you and every you know every dog has his day hey I, i've, I've got to step off into the sunset but that passion and that desire to be involved is still there. Now, Dan, I have to say, I think you're number two for the most fights of all time. Uh, there's only one person over you, but I think over 120 something fights with over a hundred wins, an impressive record. And like I said, I looked up to you so much and I still do, but as a child, I looked up to you so much because I was a wrestling guy. I loved amateur wrestling and you had a style unlike any style I've ever seen in the UFC since. I, I don't think anybody um, has done it like you, but I look back on your record and I see some of the people that are listed as having a defeat over Dan Severn that have no business saying that they beat Dan Severn because it was when you was in your later years in life. Well, I'm curious for you, do you regret having any of those doing them later on in life? Would you do it over again? No, I, I again, because I mean, I, I say that so quickly because, you know, I can't turn back the, the clock of time. Uh, no, nobody can. So right. Um, I typically always say that I, I have to live with my, my decisions. Um, no, there was, I mean, there, the money wasn't nowhere near as grand as it is now. Throughout, throughout my, literally throughout my entire career. I mean, it was. Uh, I mean, it, it, I, I just, I always referred to myself as really as a, as like a journeyman. Um, I might get, uh, I might get a fight set up at one location, but then uh, you know, like the day after, I might be doing, I might be doing a seminar or speaking engagement. Or a feast, or or something else. I mean, there was a, 
there was I, I, I it be, it became just kind of like a business cycle for me to where I multitask knowing that my 24 or my 48 hours is gone. Um, how many different ways can I monetize on this? And I actually think that there's a, I think a lot of people should be blown away at how many different things I was doing. And especially, oh, yeah. and especially at the age I was doing it at. So um, I, I, again, I, 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 I know we've gone over this before. I mean, the fact that I, I tell people I only ever did two training camps, two true training camps were 32 days and 35 days. It's, again, when you look at, if you were to talk to any UFC competitor in, in, in the last decade, and if you were to say you only trained for 32 days or 35 days, and that was it, and then you climbed into that cage, yeah. But because th they'll take out multiple months knowing that they only have one fight this year, this one event that's coming up, or maybe two max. If there's a someone that, that gets hurt or something like that, that you might be a last second feeling. I mean, that's that's the best you can see one to two a year. Dan, give us an idea. I'm not going to name any specific events or anything like this, but going back to the 90s, you know, nowadays, if you are in a heavyweight championship match, you're looking at millions of dollars and percentages and stuff like that. What kind of money were we looking at back then to, to be a heavyweight champion? Well, no, I mean, again, I'm, I'm always quick to, to, to tell people, I mean, my, uh, <laughs> my, my first time I did walked into the UFC, my guarantee walking into the cage was $1,000. That's my guarantee. And, and I signed a contract that in the fine print, it simply stated, in the event of your accidental death now <laughs> eric it was the no holes barred era oh yeah yeah you guys it, didn't know what could happen yeah the, the, the only two rules they had was no biting no eye gouging that was it so i always tell, always tell people the rules were pretty simple no biting no eye gouging but even then they were not Grounds for disqualification. Big John might slap your hand and go, Eric, don't do that again and uh, give him his eyeball back. And I, I say it kind of kidly like that, but but there was one particular match where Paul Varland, Paul Varland, I mean, who was no longer with us, did get eye gouged a couple of times and eventually did lose eyesight in that eye. So again, I go, I go, I'm just, you know, I'm just telling people the, the way it was that that was the rules. And that was only one round unlimited time to where that was a whole different time period for the UFC known as that no bar. But like I said, they wanted ultimate, ultimate victory. They didn't, did not, they did not want something to go to judges. They didn't want something. So they just simply, Unlimited time and, uh, you know. I couldn't see any sleep. of the fighters now doing the four fights a night. Was it three or four? It, it anyway, was the three, multiple three. fights a night, yeah. man. That was crazy. Yeah. No, it, it was three. And and, and, and it was uh, the same basic two-hour pay-per-view that still runs uh, to this day. It, it was being held back then. So, but, you know, the... The UFC is a very well-oiled machine now. I mean, back then, oh yeah, if, if matches went short, they did not have all this filler material of saying, uh, "Here's Eric." What Eric Carroll had to say. Here's some training clips of Eric Carroll. I mean, th that's you know, th they're a very well-oiled well machine. So that if you have a main event that is slated for five five minute rounds and it's all done in the first uh, couple minutes with a quick knockout or something like that, you know, it's done. I mean, again, you know, we, we were talking a little bit earlier on there, like. Recently, what took place uh, right back at that Madison Square Garden, you've got John Jones. Uh, oh, heavyweight, yes. Heavyweight vault that, that, took, that took place. And it, uh, it ended, uh, what was, it, was that in the first round or was that the second round? I want to say it was the second, Dan. 
Okay, but but again, it, it was ended by a spinning back heel kick that that Jones placed, and I mean, a, a very a very devastating type of a strike. But every me, time I think that Jones, you know, it might be Father Time catching up to him. This is going to be the last one. Every time, Dan, he comes back, and in this fight, he looked better than the last time we saw him. He uh, again, in my opinion, he could park his butt there for another year or two and he'll be just fine there's i always told people that as as an amateur wrestler again a lot of people understand this jones actually has a wrestling background he just has never used <laughs> he just never used it yet he what has, is it that makes jones so deadly dan well i mean but, but he's he's uh, again a problem the fact that he's thinking outside the box he's won matches with like with spinning back fists spinning back elbows He's spinning back heel kicks. He's he, he's tall. He's long. Yeah, I credit him for using his body in a proper in a proper way. Now I again, heard Cormier talk about this on the Rogan podcast, and he said, "You know, there was bad blood between the two of them." And he was uh-huh. a fellow wrestler himself, but he said it made him so angry because he had never fought anybody like Jones. He was like, anytime you would get close, he would get you in that you know that grip. And he was kneeing you. He was punching you. He's like, where is this coming from? He couldn't get a- away from him. How deadly Jones was with his reach. And like, if you go inside that certain area with him, you're in the danger zone. Yeah. Well, again, but that's again, being smart. I, 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 as I stated early on, and when you asked me about, about my own career, stuff like that, I, I, I'm not the striker. I'm not spending no, t- no time really working on my, my standing strike up skills, things of that nature. But you don't want to do a boxing match with Jake Paul, Dan? What's that? No. You don't want to do a boxing match with no. Jake Paul? No, no, no. Again, <laughs> I'd be stacking the deck in someone else's favor. I don't need money that bad that I have to go. And, uh, yeah, so, no, no. I would I would never give him that opportunity. So I, I, want, to, I want to go back to that for a second, though, Dan, because we didn't. You said so you was guaranteed $1,000 a night in the early No, no, no. Okay. I was guaranteed a th- okay, not a night. It just. I was guaranteed a thousand dollars to step out in that UFC, but there if, if again that was for three fights. Three fights guaranteed a thousand dollars. But again, today, if you were in the UFC yeah. uh, heavyweight champion, you're looking at millions of dollars potentially every time they go into the ring and do a championship fight. Mm-hmm. Back then, you don't have to give a specific number. What are we looking at? Five digits, six digits, seven no, digits? No, you're, you're looking at, I think, uh, I think. The, okay, no, the prize money was, uh, gosh, if, if you won, 50, 50, 000, yeah, 50,000. 50, $50,000. Yeah. yeah, the tournament, again, the tournament for three fights, you end up getting $50,000, which again was, was a, 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 you know, I mean, that was a phenomenal payday. Now I know why you didn't do many training camps because you got to pay those people and Dan's not paying anybody. <laughs> well, I'm but, sorry. Okay. but no, no, no. Again, what, what, Eric is fair, is, is fair to say, I, I get that from Don Fry all the time as well. I mean, it's, but, but again, I didn't do training camps, but it wasn't because I, I just, I was, I was working. It was, uh, all that kind of stuff of, of working all the time. You have been training for 36 get... years though, Dan. What's that? I said, you have been training for 36 years. I don't know that there's, was there really anything uh, outside of studying jujitsu training wise that you weren't already prepared for? I mean, as a, as an amateur wrestler, that's like some of those rigorous and hardcore training that you can do for anything. Yeah, no, I, 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 I had, I mean, if I go back a time there, Eric, had had I retired, you know, like like, like then there's been a couple different times that uh, I've looked at. You know, I was going to retire in 1984. Yeah, but it was going to be after the Olympic Games were done. I should have uh, won the Olympic gold medal and all that kind of stuff, and I I would have retired. But because things did not go the way I wanted them to go, it made me want to continue on. And then uh, uh, 1992, I uh, took a job position down in Coldwater, Michigan. I bought and sold a home. When, and I did this all within a two-week period of time and uh, went to work. 
And at the end of the first week, and again, I relocated there because I was promised a salary that and all the health benefits, the perks that a young married man with children wanted to hear. And at the end of the first week, I did not have a job. And so, and it was uh, during uh, basically a recessionary time period in the United States. And, and I, I ended up seeking out a, a legal friend that I, I, I had. And he's like, he goes, Dan, he goes, you got no recourse because that was just when the, what they call the at will clause. Companies could let you go at will with no right. explanation whatsoever. I mean, just boom, you're, you're done. And uh, you, you don't have a leg to stand on. And that's literally what, what my attorney friend said, that, that the at-will clause is there. He goes, he go, he, he's like, you need to go to unemployment. I go, how? I, I didn't, I, I had never been unemployed. I have never gone to apply for unemployment benefits. I mean, it, it's going, and, and again, I was embarrassed. Know, all, all those kinds of things. Just, so it's kind of going, I just, all at that same 1984 time period uh, that uh, that I, that that all this stuff was kind of that I, I relocated back to the state of Michigan and, and things of that nature. This all happened right, right at 1992 when this this all took place. I bought this new house, stuff like that, and the UFC started actually December 1993 was its very first UFC number one. Most people don't, don't even know that. I always just say it just started in 1994 because if they went to Blockbuster Video, then the, the that's when I got it. it. Yeah, that's where they yeah. saw all those videotapes. So I usually always gotcha. tell them it's 1994. Dan, I have uh, enjoyed this so much getting to uh, you know getting to reconnect with you and man, guys. Hopefully, we'll have some more episodes of Unleashed coming to you soon. What are some things that you guys would like to hear about though? We'd like to hear some topics from you. Maybe there's certain matches or questions that you got for the beast down here. We want to hear them. Uh, other than that, Dan, want to say anything to anybody out there before the Thanksgiving holidays get here? Well, no, again, I, I, I didn't, I think that's what we kind of started to sit for our first place was simply just to uh, be able to put something out there, just about to wish uh, America and Americans a very uh, great Thanksgiving, uh, spending it, and you, you, what you've reiterated a number of times, spending some quality time with your, some family and friends. Even if you can't be there, you know, at least reach out to them through the phone and just try to reconnect just to let, let people know that you're thinking about them. I already reconnected with one of my fellow uh, college teammates here from Arizona State early this morning. I had breakfast with a, a fellow teammate of mine that, uh, you know, he's like, oh, Dan, he goes, we're getting old there. I mean, God, my, and his first name was Bob. I go, Bob, I go, <laughs> don't drag me down in, <laughs> with you here right now. I go, I, I, I think I'm the spryest senior citizen you're going to find. <laughs> you are. You are. Yeah. Though. Not to brag on you too much, but good God, man, if I could get a, a, around like that at my age, what do you attribute, Dan? Because I, I know of a lot of the injuries that you have, but you still get around good. Uh, no, what would you attribute is, but, but, to but, but you keeping you in such good health? I, I had you know double carpal tunnel uh, surgery on, on the hands, uh, you know, basically uh, just a, uh, about a year ago. I had a total hip replacement a uh, little over just uh, a year ago. Um, and you know, again, to make a long story short, the, uh, the one doctor brought in a second doctor with them. And, 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 and as, as you bring the other doctor into him, you know, he's being, he's, he, you know, he, they're not really saying that. And, and then he actually nudges him. He goes, go ahead, ask him. And then the, the, his, his, his associate said, he goes, my fellow colleague here says that you walked in here today. And I said, well, I said, I didn't really walk in here. I kind of limped in here is what I did. And then, you know, his colleague went on to simply say again, he goes, based upon your MRI, you shouldn't even be able to limp in here. He said, if a scale of one to 10, with 10 being the worst that we've ever seen, he goes, your hip is a 10 plus. And neither one of us, have ever seen a 10 plus. <laughs> so, you know, it was like, he, he, he it was, it was kind of, I'll say kind of comical into it. And I go, well, I go, 
I mean that, well, Doc, I said, you don't really don't know who I am or what I do. I said, but I've been in the business of pain. I said, typically it's giving, not receiving. I said, so I, I, I said, you know, so they, they, they did like my, my wacky sense of humor about things, but the fact that I did hobble around for it as long as I did, but it did, it did take me, I think a lot longer to heal up properly from it. I mean, I was going to rehab, you know, through, you know, through the physical therapy aspect, but it was, I, I didn't feel like I was getting enough. And I said, I did it for at least the first few weeks. And then I'm like, okay, do you, do you guys care if I start going to the gym on all two year alternate days, doing the exact same so I can get some more repetition in, but I want to add a few more zing ma zing zings into it so that I could do even more things. So, and like, well, try to, you know, bear in mind as to what you're trying to limit yourself. But, but, you know, Eric, when I walk into the gym, I'm in my own little world when I walk into the gym. There, there's, there's a lot of people. I, I, again, I think I told you before, I work out predominantly at uh, a location known as the Anytime Fitness in Fountain Hills. It's, you know, the, the, the Fountain Hills has got three or four different gyms to, to it. What I like about the Anytime Fitness is the fact that I've always had a membership for the Anytime Fitness because I travel so much when I work for uh, WWE slash, you know, WWF, you know, for, for, for professional wrestling. And just trying to let, I just always need to find myself a place to work out. Yeah. Ill regardless as to what day, uh, what time of day it would be. So what I liked about the Anytime Fitness is I have my little key card. I can Anytime. go in. And I, and I get my own little workout because I always tell people that I like it, that, that sure, there are trainers that are available to take you through a program if you've never worked out yourself or if you got a certain injury, they might be able to recommend certain types of uh, exercise. But I do things for myself. There's always certain things that I'm going to start off with that's going to be cardiovascular based that I'm going to get my heart up a pumping, but then I'm going to work my legs, my my core, uh, and then my upper body, and then, uh, but I could be in and out of a gym in an hour's time, and I would do way more than the average bear because a lot of people they'll like they'll do the bench, they do one set, and then they wait, they get the weights on, they add some more weight, and then they then they'll do the next set. I'll do a bench, and then I walk over to another. I'll do something on the leg, super set, something on the core, and then I'll do something on the upper body, and then I come right back again to where. I did two or three other things while waiting for my rest period in between that. Because to me, I do the same thing. Dan. To boil down to time and lack of it. I I, I, I I do talk about the concept of time because as, as I stated in the very beginning here, I'm on the other side of the mountain. That's right. You know, the, the re, I mean, again, that's just the reality of Will Dan Severn live another 66 years? I'm 66 now. Will I live another six? The, the odds, if I was to call Las Vegas to get a bet, the odds are heavily weighed against me. Now, would you not say that that's the truth, Eric? I would think so. Okay. So I, I, again, mean, I believe you, though, Dan. I am rooting for you. Yeah. See, I, I play, I'm playing the long game here right now towards like I believe in me, knowing that, you know, I, I will invest time and energy into doing things because I don't want to sit around and just be drooling down my chin. And, nah, someone, has take, and someone has to take care of me because I still have pride. That's where the depression comes from. Not keeping yes. yourself busy, not having an organization. Yes. You can't do that to yourself, guys. And I think so many people get stuck in that now, Dan, especially with the, with the cell phones. They just sit there and consume that. And before you know, an hour or two's went by and you're giving away your most precious commodity, which is your yeah. time. That hour could have went yeah, to your but, family. But, it could have went to your body. Yeah. Okay. okay that's again, you just stated what, again, that we're, as long as you're connecting, I mean, if you just, as I said, you're just watching stuff, you're watching life pass you by. To me, it's like going, use that same cell phone to reach out and, to reconnect like in the, in the last 24 hours i spoke to a couple different family members already you know because again i know thanksgiving is coming up and uh back in michigan 
you think that I like to eat. You ought to wait to see when when a bunch of the severns get together, Eric. That's a that's a food <laughs> fest. <laughs> that is that is a food fest that you better not better watch out when you reach across right there. You might be pulling back some nubs. <laughs> I feel sorry for the buffet at that point. <laughs> yeah, but no, it's but, uh, uh, you know as as we finish up here, it's gonna you know just wishing everybody just a a a, a, a very uh, thankful Thanksgiving. Um, and we're not trying to not trying to just you know just to say that that we're doing this in a political type sense, but uh, it, to me it's it's called no spend spend some time with family and friends, and uh, you know make some some more memories because in the end that's all you really have is those memories. Absolutely, and guys, for those memories, make sure to like, share, subscribe over there and Unleashed, and uh, let us know that you're enjoying the program. We will be back after Thanksgiving. Until then, Dan, we'll see you next time. Sounds good.